A very warm welcome back to today's Aviation News Recap. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. In this video, I'll be taking a look at Airbus's orders and deliveries, not just for June, but the half yearly results. Singapore Airlines has had a fantastic partnership approved, and Lufthansa is being investigated over developments that occurred during the global pandemic. Let me begin with that very story. The European Commission has opened up an investigation into the state aid that Lufthansa received during the global pandemic that emerged in 2020. As airlines battled the effects of this very pandemic, the degree of support they received definitely altered. We saw some companies receive major benefits that truly helped them keep afloat, and in the complete opposite, other companies received no support, with some collapsing or some being set back a considerable margin that they're still recovering from to this day. German flag carrier Lufthansa, however, received significant levels of support to keep it afloat during what can only be described as some of the company's more challenging periods since it launched operations. Despite the EU approving the state aid that now took place several years ago, it is cracking down and investigating whether the aid that was approved by the German government and therefore sent by them is breaching rules. The EU basically wants to better understand whether Lufthansa Group was actually eligible for the state aid that they received, and I'll get into more of the concerns. And this all stems from the firm grip that Lufthansa has on the market and concerns about competition within the sector that could have been affected because of this aid. The state aid I am speaking of, which was valued in the billions of the euro currency, did include several equity payments to generally help stabilise the company and get it through, as I touched on, some of the more difficult periods. On June 25, 2020, this is an important thing to consider, the Commission formally approved the recapitalization measures that were notified to them by Germany. The Commission also found that the measures Measures that were looking to be implemented were deemed compatible with the state aid rules at the time. For this to be approved, Lufthansa needed to comply with many different commitments, and this included a ban on dividends, limitations surrounding management, and also no bonus payments. The press release that follows says a judgment on the 10th of May 2023, fast forward almost three years, saw the general court consider that the measures previously approved didn't actually meet all the conditions outlined in the COVID temporary framework. This is in relation to the aid that businesses got during the pandemic. The opening of an investigation certainly isn't a shock for the German company, which believed something was always bound to come, and they will work diligently through it to, of course, prove that they were meant to receive this aid, and they've done everything by the book. On to the next story, and the joint venture between Singapore Airlines and Garuda Indonesia has received regulatory approval. The approval came from the Competition and Consumer Commission of Singapore, which had been reviewing the deal's terms to assess its overall impact. In cases where airlines want to, say, merge to establish a relationship or deepen their existing relationship for that matter, watchdogs will need to assess the impact of approving such a deal. The assessment is crucial to understanding whether approval will, say, negatively impact consumers and prospective customers alongside existing competition in the form of your airlines that call this region home or look to fly to these locations. For example, if the findings from the competition watchdog are deemed that a relationship would affect many parties, well, then the watchdog would look to reject the prospective deal, and we've seen this happen on several occasions. And in other instances, the watchdog might come back with several points that they want answered or rectified before they will give the formal approval. However, the approved Singapore Airlines and Garuda Indonesia venture will now see the pair strengthen their ties even further, and this will be seen via multiple avenues. The approval could but not be limited to including operating joint revenue sharing flights between Indonesia and Singapore and furthermore these two companies have highlighted the ability to coordinate their flight schedules which will be incredibly important for their travelers offering them greater opportunities with 
travel between the two countries, but this extending even beyond that. Meanwhile, they also highlight the ability to expand their joint sales and marketing initiatives to provide greater value to customers across the two airlines. And a little bit later in this segment, I'll get into the focal point for the marketing. Since 2023, actually, Singapore and Garuda have looked to work together on initiatives such as their Garuda Miles and Chris Flyer member loyalty schemes, where you see the ability to to redeem points on code sharing routes. In terms of marketing, well, promoting tourism activities has also been an important element of the two airlines' work. They note that the continued development of this will enable greater support for your long term post pandemic economic recovery. They do already code share also across a variety of markets. Now, this includes destinations within Asia, but also we see that connectivity stretch to international markets such as London Heathrow. Mumbai and Johannesburg, each in different ways, benefiting the airlines and their customers with greater options for flight. On to the final story in today's aviation news recap, and Airbus has published its June order and delivery report, and therefore that makes it its half-year results, reflecting improvements but still work to be done. In June, the Plane Makers Commercial Aircraft Division actually delivered 67 aircraft to 40 customers, which represents a very solid month. As part of the deliveries, we saw two A220-100s, two A220-300s, 19 A320neos, 34 A321neos, three of your A330 900s, and lastly, four A350 900s. The month really did continue the theme of the A321 Neo's excellence, and as a favoured choice in the broader A320 Neo family, thanks to its enhanced capabilities. And that additional capacity certainly does go a long way, but it won't just be the additional capacity that is going to make it a true favourite in the years to come. The gap is expected to widen between the base model and this series, as certification looms and also delivery for the next-gen and enhanced A321 XLR, which will enter service in the third quarter of 2024 and push the boundaries and limitations we once saw of single-aisle travel further. June saw a gross aircraft order tally of also 73, which was pretty solid, and with the 2024 Farnborough Air Show a mere matter of weeks away, this will see the industry's eyes land on that exact location, and therefore high-profile aircraft orders could either be unveiled or progressed to the final stages before eventually being announced. Airbus obviously hopes that the air show will be a success for them, not just in the form of aircraft orders, but also continuing to stabilise elements of the business that remain shaky. June saw orders for 38 of the A321neos, and arguably probably the biggest was in the form of Indigo confirming that they would purchase the A350-900. Indigo's purchase of this aircraft is expected to move them one step further in the right direction to capture demand across their home country of, you guessed it, India. And now with the ability to offer long-range services, it's an exciting time for them. In 2024, though, thus far, Airbus has delivered 323 aircraft, and this figure represents a very minor 2% increase year over year. So while an improvement, it still isn't where they want to be at. And that was reflected when in recent weeks they cut their delivery forecast. They previously aimed at delivering 800 planes at a minimum, but now they're targeting 770, being a reduction of 30 to reflect the ongoing pressures that they face. That is going to conclude today's aviation news recap. Thank you very much for your support here on the channel. It is certainly appreciated. Take care, be safe, and I'll see you same place, same time tomorrow for your next aviation recap. And we'll fly.